Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. In this video, I want to share with you the latest update on CBDCs. Recently, we have been covering the main developments in detail, but with new pilot programs being launched around the world virtually weekly, there is now more information that has been revealed. From reading your comments, I know many are very interested in this particular topic. All of us should be. If you are a subscriber of mine, you already know this, I upload weekly CBDC updates covering recent events over on my Rumble channel. You will find a link below if you're interested. So what do we know about CBDCs and their functionality so far? Here's a quick updated summary to help you catch up on anything that you may have missed. Central bank digital currencies are programmable currencies with a variety of features that can be turned on or turned off depending on the issuer's needs and preferences. The digital currency is issued by a central bank rather than a commercial bank. Once issued, it will essentially remain under the full control of its issuer. CBDCs are state-issued and state-operated. Digital currency development is truly a global process these days. At this moment, based on the information that was shared by the Atlantic Council, 114 countries are actively pursuing CBDCs. Of those 114 countries, 10% have already adopted them. 16% have launched a variety of pilot programs. These are limited scope rollouts, by the way, and 57% are researching or developing digital currencies. So needless to say, there is no turning back given that the entire world is firmly on the digital currency path. What does a CBDC derive its value from? That is a very important question. The value is linked to the issuing country's official currency. So in the case with the US dollar, for example, the value of the digital dollar will be one-to-one -one with the fiat US currency. With that being said, CBDCs are not pegged to any physical commodity. So there's absolutely nothing tangible that backs it. The digital dollar will be backed by the full faith of the government, same as our fiat currency. Now let's talk about expiration dates. A CBDC is very likely to have an expiration date. A CBDC in China has expiration dates and it serves as an encouragement for consumers, for users to use it. Essentially, it will be use or lose it type situation. As you might already know, expiration dates would make it virtually impossible for you to save your digital currency for future use. It will become worthless on a date that is defined by its issuer. There are three main types of CBDCs, retail, wholesale, and hybrid. I will not be going into too much detail here because there is an entire video on my channel that explains how that works. But on a very high level, retail digital currencies are used by individual consumers and businesses, while wholesale digital currency is for bank settlements, so very large sums of money. Now let's talk about the mechanics. How will CBDCs operate? One type of CBDC is an account-based model such as Dcash, which is being implemented in the Eastern Caribbean. With Dcash, consumers hold deposit accounts directly with their central bank. Most likely, this is the route that the United States will take. In China, a CBDC pilot relies on private banks to distribute and to maintain digital currency accounts for their customers. There's also a third way to handle it. And this is something that the European Central Bank is leaning towards. In this case, licensed financial institutions each operate a permissioned node of the blockchain network for the distribution of a digital euro. All three of these methods either have already been tested or are being piloted as we speak. Before I walk you through digital wallets, a quick reminder to check out our sponsor, ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is my recommended virtual private network for secure online browsing. Nowadays, with all of our personal and private information being stored online, a VPN is one of essential services. Claim your three full months of free service when you sign up using the link shared in the description below. Where will you store your digital currency? A CBDC is stored in a digital wallet that is maintained by a bank. Essentially, a digital wallet is a software program that stores your digital assets. 
through your digital wallet, you will be able to, and this is of course something that depends on the features or settings that an issuer will turn on, potentially you will be able to view, to trade, send, receive, and exchange your digital money. Those of us who don't have bank accounts would use a hardware wallet. A hardware wallet would be in the form of a smart card or a dongle. I've come across such information that software alone is not going to be secure enough against hacking attacks. So users will be encouraged to have both hardware and software digital wallets. There is a quick video on my channel that goes into more detail. Earlier today, I mentioned that 10% of the countries have already adopted CBDCs. So let's take a look at how it's working out for them and if there's anything that we can learn. I really can't help but start with Nigeria. There's a lot that can be said, but for purposes of this video, Nigeria has been suffering. In late 2022, the government put a limit on cash withdrawals, which resulted in Nigerians not being able to cover even medical expenses or buy food. The rate of adoption has been extremely low and Inaira was not received well. The cash crisis really did hit the economy hard, but the Nigerian central bank is actively pursuing the help of two tech companies to assist them with the implementation of the CBDC. There's an entire video on my channel with the details on the cash crisis that also coincided with their presidential elections and was definitely affected by it as well. Bahamas Send Dollar was one of the first CBDCs to be formally adopted. The central bank of the Bahamas, CBB, launched the Send Dollar just over two years ago. Bloomberg is reporting that two years in, adoption is sluggish. In addition to that, the International Monetary Fund concluded that after its rollout, more cybersecurity was needed. As you may remember, FTX was headquartered in the Bahamas and its collapse had a negative impact on people's willingness to move forward with CBDC adoption here. So that's it for today. The development and the adoption of CBDCs across the world is of course part of a broader digital transformation process that's not a secret, so it is important to keep up with the updates and with the news. This process is moving forward extremely aggressively. I will continue sharing updates with you. If you like this video, you might also enjoy a variety of detailed videos on the subject, both on my YouTube and Rumble channels. Leave me a comment to let me know your take on digital currencies. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and share the video with your friends and family to help them learn more about the new digital currency. It's just around the corner. I'll see you in my new video tomorrow. Take care.